So for three years, we've been waiting for someone to actually dethrone OpenAI, not just catch up, but actually crush them. Well, wake up because it's just happened. Not that I was a big fan of ChatGPT before this, as all you guys know, but Google just dropped Gemini 3 and the benchmarks aren't just better, they're humiliating for OpenAI. We're talking about a model that runs on custom ironwood silicon that makes NVIDIA look slow, a coding agent that feels really good, and a business model that actually could make some money here. And this is, again, this is Google, so they've got the money to spend. So if you're still uh, paying for ChatGPT today, you're betting on a losing horse. I'm going to break down exactly why the war is absolutely over and Google just won. Let's dive into it. Welcome to Startup Hack. I'm Spencer, and here at Startup Hack, we love to uh, build custom software solutions for companies. With a decade of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years in software development, I've mastered transforming tech teams and products. All right, so Gemini 3 is launched, and it's incredible. I've spent the last 24 hours running with this through the gauntlet, and I've and I and I haven't slept a ton. It's actually like it's been we've been doing a lot of stuff here. Google has finally leveraged one of the things that nobody else does, and they have 25 years of owning internet data. So while OpenAI is burning venture capital cash to rent servers, Google is using their real net revenue to build infrastructure that no startup can compete with. Today, we're going to dive into some of the reasons why G uh, Gemini 3 is the new king of the hill. And hey, do me a quick favor. I want to hear from you. Are you team Google? Are you team OpenAI or Anthropic or who are you using? Do you think the benchmark scores are real? Leave me a comment down below because I'm curious to hear what you guys see, think. So let's dive into some of this today. All right, so let's get over here to our monitor. So Google announces a new era of intelligence with Gemini 3. Now, it was actually kind of a quiet launch, I'm going to say. There's not all the fanfare that leads up to it. The way Open WR, uh, the way Open, you can tell I'm an Open WRT developer, the way Open AI uh, does this, right? So, you know, there's a note for Sundar Pichai. He says, nearly two decades ago, we kicked off the Gemini era, one of our biggest scientific and product endeavors ever undertaken as a company. Now that's saying something if you're Google, right? Since then, it's been incredible to see how much people love it. AI overviews now have 2 billion users every month. So that's pretty impressive. That's a big number, right? That's a really big number. The Gemini app surpassed 650 million users per month. More than 70% of our cloud customers use, open, use our AI. 13 million developers have built with our generative tools. So they're tying some really, really big numbers here. But where things get pretty interesting here is when they talk about our most intelligent model that helps you bring ideas to life, right? Now, that's pretty good. But when they get into these benchmarks, this is where it becomes absolutely incredible. So these benchmarks leaked a couple days ago. So there wasn't a whole lot necessarily new, new, but GPT 5.1 just got released. And Gemini said, hey, hold on to my root beer here, right? Because they absolutely crushed them in literally every category. There's not a single one of these that Ge that um, Gemini doesn't absolutely just crush any of the comp competitors, but particularly OpenAI. AI. Um, and so this is just one of those where it's just, you know, in the vending benchmark, I actually like this one. It's one of my favorite ones because it's like the vending machine uh, where it tries to run a biz business. Gemini did the best. Um, and so like all of these here that as you're looking at, like oh, oh, um, Gemini just absolutely crushes GPT on all of these. So these benchmarks are pretty incredible. Um, but over, overall, as I've dug into it and started to use it today, it definitely has a better feel uh, than what I would have expected. Now, um, jump into here because, uh, you know, this is definitely how Sam Altman's going to be today. Google's throwing its full weight behind its latest AI model, Gemini 3. It has one major advantage that could be a problem for OpenAI. However, um, the ChatGPT brand is benefiting from the Kleenex effect. I don't know that I agree with Business Insider here. I think that I, I don't know that I totally agree with this because Google announced Gemini 3, uh, its latest model, says it's better at coding, better at pretty much everything. Now, all the Google's all out offensive is putting the pro version of Gemini 3. Oh, I love pop-ups. Pop-ups are my favorite thing. Um, directly into the hands of users and developers and the most significant marks the first time Google's introduced its new AI model to search on day one. Now, the one thing that I did notice is they don't have it in the mobile app. That was actually kind of annoying to me today. I went to go use something on my phone and I'm like, ugh, this kind of sucks. So while OpenAI owns ChatGPT, the most popular AI chatbot, and I think that's not going to be the case for long, it doesn't offer much else, right? Google, however, can integrate it into everything. Hey, look, there's a little Gemini sparkle on my Chrome browser here. Surprise, Google can build this into everything. 
Now, one of the very first things that also gets announced, bringing Gemini 3 to Enterprise. This is where Google is going to crush OpenAI. Um, I know that here at Startup Pack, we were just starting up a new team last week. And as we were starting up the new team, uh, I said, look, we're going to have to get onto some standard tools. A lot of my other teams kind of have hodgepodge on some of their tools. I said, no, this team's going to start on the thing. I did my own head to head research right now, right now, uh, like latest and greatest using, uh, you know, judging against Claude Sonnet. And I heard all the rumors that GPT three or Gemini throw Gemini three were coming, but I uh, tested Claude Sonnet using Claude code, use cursor. And even on Gemini 2.5 Pro, it was better for a bunch of reasons. One of the big reasons was cost. Uh, I could bundle it in with all of my other uh, costs, and it was overall cheaper than Claude Code to pay for my uh, workspace accounts, to pay for Gemini through my workspace accounts. But I knew Gemini 3 was coming. But sure enough, now, after today, already seeing a marked improvement in how we're using it today. And the best part is, is with Claude Code, we hit limits very frequently. But with Gemini, we've not hit the limits yet. And my developers are using this all day, every day. So you can definitely see that I'm already one of these that are biting into this. Now, when I come to this, I think this really is the biggest thing at the end of the day is you've got the full weight of Google behind you. You've got the safety of Google behind you. Google is promising according to their business terms. Now, this is Google, so who can try to prove them wrong? But Google is saying that they do not train on the workspace data. So that's the other thing is from an enterprise account, they're saying that my enterprise account that's in here is not going to get trained against. So that technically means it's safe. Now, I personally still don't put customer or sensitive data into there, but this does become pretty interesting. So the hardware here is part of the destiny. Google just proved it with their seventh generation TPU Ironwood uh, TPUs. So they're not using GPUs, they're using a TPU, right? While everyone else is fighting over NVIDIA H100 scraps, Google just deployed super pods with 9,216 Ironwood chips. These things are 10 times faster than the previous generation with massive bandwidth that allows Gemini to think instantly. So I've been saying for years that vertical integration wins. Google owns the chips, the data center, and the model. This means they can offer Gemini 3 at a lower price point than OpenAI can offer GPT 5.1 because of their cost to computers so much lower. Not only that, who's the king of running data centers? It's Google. Like, I don't know anybody who knows how to run data centers bigger and better than Google. So it's not just a chip, it's an economic moat that Sam Altman is not gonna be able to cross. Now this isn't just chatbots anymore. The new deep research feature is really good. It doesn't just summarize a web page. It agentically browses hundreds of sites, cross-references data, and then writes a PhD level report. It's pretty impressive. Now, as with always, you've got to check the answers because it still halluc hallucinates, right? Now the hallucination numbers are lower than any other model that we've seen to date but it's still getting in the answers wrong. Like you notice that those, uh, that those benchmarks were still in the 80% and 80 to 90%, right? So it's like when we still get into some of this, you're still going to see hallucinations. But so I use it to analyze a, analyze a client's competitor landscape and it did 40 hours of work in about 15 minutes. So it connects, it can connect to your driving, your docs and those things. I'm not a big fan of doing this, but I really, uh, it, a lot of people are starting to use that. I'm still not sold on that. I'm very careful on where I put uh, connect things to. But let's talk, talk benchmarks. There's a new test called the Humanities Last Exam, and it's designed to be impossibly hard for AI. Now, Gemini 3 scored a 37.5%. Now, that sounds really low until you realize that ChatGPT 5.1, the one that just got released last week, scored a 25%, and they were bragging about on this. So the gap is massive. It's, it's the difference between a smart high schooler and a domain expert. It crushed a bunch of the other benchmarks and did really well on those. Now, I'm not a huge benchmark fan because I know that they can kind of game these benchmarks, so I'm always super skeptical. But I have plugged it in and we've watched it refactor some legacy C sharp code bases into some pretty clean .NET code. Now, again, still didn't take the whole project and did it, but when we when we worked with things class by class and function by function, it did a pretty good job. Now, I know like a lot of people are into vibe coding. There's some new vibe coding tools that have come with Gemini 3 as well. So if you're really into vibe coding, you can dive in and start taking a look at that. It's not really my cup of tea, but I know how to develop. So you know, and I've got teams of developers. Now, one of the things that's really interesting here is you have to follow the money, right? Google is spending capital expenditures or CapEx from their net revenue. This may, they make billions of dollars on search ads every quarter 
and they're pouring a lot of that straight into their AI infrastructure. So this is different where AI, OpenAI and Anthropic are burning VC money. They have to go beg investors for another round every time they want to train a model. Google can sustain this burn forever. It's not a burn for them. It's not even a burn. It's just an investment. They simply could be returning the stock price or whatever, but they're just investing back to it. So this financial stability means enterprises can trust Google will be around for 10 years. Can you, can you guarantee that on OpenAI and Anthropic? Now, Gemini 3 effectively has a functionally, a functionally infinite context window for most businesses, business use case. You can upload entire code repositories, massive legal contracts, or hours of video. It remembers the beginning of the conversation just as well as the end, which has always been the kind of the Achilles heel of LLMs. So this is an opportunity for them to be able to really scale this. Now, we aren't just doing text to text anymore. Gemini 3 handles audio, video, and code natively and simultaneously. So you can show it a video stream of a server rack and it can tell you which cable is plugged in wrong. So it's pretty impressive. Now, I haven't done a lot of the work with the video and the audio, but the benchmarks and things that I'm reading says that it does pretty good in most of the reviews I'm reading. So this moves us from read only to like also being able to dive into some other parts. So remember that this started, you know, from the DeepMind team, which has been around long before OpenAI was even a thought. Now, this sounds kind of creepy, but Google already knows you. Think about everything Google already knows about you. Gemini 3 uses your Gmail, your calendar, your maps, history to give you answers that actually make sense for you. So if I ask when my next flight is, it's not going to ask which flight. It's going to be able to look at my calendar. OpenAI doesn't have this kind of ecosystem yet. They do not even begin to start to get this. So the ecosystem lock-in for most people. I don't know very many people who don't have at least one Google account. So now because of the Ironwood chips, GPU is pricing Gemini 3 API calls really aggressively low. They're trying to suffocate the competition by making intelligence too cheap to, to even meter. For startups, this is a dream. Our bill for inference dropped by a massive amount on things that we've been doing with Google. Now, OpenAI has been keeping its price, uh, prices high to pay Microsoft and NVIDIA. Google can drop that price to, cap, uh, to capture market share. So cheap, smart intelligence is the fuel for the next generation of these startups. Now, TechCrunch noted that Gemini 3 is far less prone to hallucinations in business context. Google has implemented grounding, and that's a technology, grounding tech that forces the model to cite sources from your internal data. This makes it viable for banking, healthcare, and legal sectors that have been scared of AI up until now. So this is going to be an interesting step. And I really think what we're seeing is the beginning of the end of a lot of these other ones. I think Google is going to take the crown here because if you think about it, Google's been the king of data. They've had all of our search uh, data. They've had all of the data across the internet. There's nobody who has more data than Google. That's at least my take on it. I'm curious to hear what you guys think. What do you guys think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? I'd love to have a great conversation. So make sure you like and subscribe and make sure um, that you check out here at startupack.com. We love to build custom software solutions for companies. So check it out and here's some great information about our services. Hi, I'm Spencer, a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and 25 years in software development, I've transformed technology teams and products for businesses just like yours. As your fractional CTO, you get the strategic guidance of a seasoned technology executive without the full-time commitment. Perfect for companies ready to leverage cutting edge technology without expanding headcounts. My team at Startup Hack has already built advanced AI agents for small and medium businesses, automating complex workflows and delivering advanced ROI to human workflows. We specialize in creating custom software that connects your systems into a single coherent technology ecosystem. Our development approach focuses on tangible business outcomes. For one client, we developed AI-powered workflows that cut days off of human processes. For another company, by connecting multiple systems, we reduce processing time to increase their ROI by over 75%. We don't just write code, we architect solutions that scale. Whether you need cloud system architecture, data integration between legacy systems, or custom AI agents, Agents that automate your unique business processes, my team delivers results that exceed your expectations. Having led technology for a lot of companies and launched seven successful brands of my own, I bring battle-tested expertise to your business challenges. Our specialty is turning technological complexity into business advantage. So if you're ready to harness the power of AI and custom software to drive your business forward, let's connect. Together, we'll build technology that doesn't just solve today's problems, it positions you for tomorrow's opportunities. Technology leadership, decades of experience, AI powered. Reach out today and we can help you. Check out startuppack.com slash